Hi, my name is Nina Wadia and you're watching me on DesiBlitz.com. DesiBlitz.com uh, Nina, thank you so much for uh, speaking to us today at the Desi Bits Literature Festival. Um, before we move on to Goodness Gracious Me, um, I wanted to understand more about how you got into acting and comedy and what sparked that type of direction for your career. Um, sure. Uh, so uh, I actually wanted to be a dancer when I was very little. I grew up in India, in Bombay. I wanted to do Bharat Natyam. I went to Vejanti Mala school there. Um, and then my teenage years, my parents had to move to Hong Kong to run a restaurant. And I started to write. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll be a writer instead. And then I went into sport and <laughs> thought, actually, I want to be someone in sport because I, I love uh, women's football, women's rugby, all that stuff. So, um, but then it got to kind of towards the end of my teenage years and I um, got the part of Lady Bracknell in the school play, um, The Importance of Being Earnest, Oscar Wilde's play. And uh, it was a comedy part and it brought the house down. And I thought, oh, this is a nice feeling. It's a real buzz. I imagine that's what taking drugs is like. So I thought, I want to do this for a living. Uh, my parents said, absolutely not. <laughs> so I did my A-levels. Um, and then after my A-levels, I begged my parents to let me go to the UK to go to drama school. And my mum was very upset about it, but she finally kind of gave in. Um, and she made me sign a piece of paper saying if in five years I was not a jobbing actor, meaning a working actor, uh, I would have to give up and go and read law, uh, you know, which is what I had done my A-levels towards. Um, so I signed in, uh, it was a false signing because I was never going to do that anyway. I didn't want to study anymore, I was tired of studying. And then I came here, went to drama school. Our first drama school, the guy ran off with all the money for the drama school. So uh, my mom said, see, this business is terrible and you're still in school. So I got picked up by another teacher uh, in Wandsworth for the London Theatre School, a wonderful woman called Barbara Buckmaster. And she put me in the school and um, didn't charge the kind of fees because we were overseas students, I so couldn't afford the fees. Um, and then I left early. Uh, I auditioned for uh, any job in the back of the stage newspaper. And my first ever job was a panto at Theatre Royal Stratford East. Funnily enough, 25 years, no, 35 years later, I'm, I'm now about to do a panto in York, Theatre Royal. Um, so yes, it kind of feels like full circle, but anyway. So I did that show and then at the end of the panto, I got seen by the Marsha Theatre Company. Christine Landon-Smith and Sudha Busha, um, who ran it at the time. And uh, I got cast as this uh, Sindhi, very spoiled girl, and she was a great character, so much fun to play. And then touch wood, for about seven years straight, I went from one job to the other. Uh, and so I said to my mum, see, I said, <laughs> I'm glad I signed the contract, but I was never gonna not be an actor. God damn it, bullshit to hell, yeah. I hate flying. Yeah, bullshit to hell, me too. I mean, Daddy's driver usually takes me everywhere. I sick, yeah. Um, would you like a bowl of sweet? Darling, please, get some Belgian truffles and we'll talk. Excuse me, I think you're sitting in my seat. Excuse me, I don't think so. This is club class, yeah? God, trying it on factor or what? Listen, I paid 20,000 rupees for that seat, right? Yeah, well, I paid 30,000 for this hairdo. Give 20 bucks, now scram. <laughs> oh, schedule cast scumbag factor. I suppose they've got their own seat quota or some such goddammit bullshit. Exactly. God, here comes another one. Excuse me, economy class seating back that way. Just looking for the toilet. What's the point? You smell like you've already been. <laughs> some people really make me sick, you know. 
So I did that, but towards the end of the seven years, I started to get a bit depressed because I never really got to play a lead or show what I could do. And it was because I was a brown actor in a white country, and that's the truth, and so I kind of struggled. So Philip Headley, the artistic director at Theatre Royal Stratford East, said to me, well, you write, don't you? He goes, so if you're saying there's no work out there for you, write it for yourself. So I co-wrote a show with six other actors and a wonderful director called Indu Ruba Singham. And we wrote, co-wrote a show called Do You Eat With Your Fingers? And that's the show that Anil Gupta and Sharat and Kovinda came to see me in. Um, and Sanjeev, actually at the time, Sanjeev Bhaskar was across the road at the Tom Allen Center. And he was doing a show called The Secret Asians with Nitin Sawney. He came to see the show and they were all like, hey, this girl, you know, we should get her on to something we want to do. Uh, hello. We've come to collect our tickets. Lovely. Can I have your names, please? Dennis and Charlotte Cooper. Cooper. And Vanessa and St. John Robinson. I'm sorry, I've got nothing in those names. The only tickets I have are for a Mr. Dinesh Kapoor. No, yeah. <laughs> Good God. Is that what you're calling yourself these days? <laughs> no, of course not. That's not us. Uh, I mean, do you really think he looks like a dishcloth caper? Or how have you pronounced it? Keep looking. We're never flying with these people again. Next thing I know, I got offered, um, goodness gracious me, but it was then called Peter Sellers is Dead. <laughs> um, so I went to um, meet these guys. I did a one-off show at the Riverside Studios with them. And next thing I knew, we were on radio. And from radio, we got picked up straight away after the Sony Award to go and do television. So I'd only done one bit of television before, goodness gracious me, and that was 2.4 children. I played a supermarket counter girl who was counting olives. And I had one scene, and that was my television experience. on Goodness Gracious Me is me learning how to do television. <laughs> I'd never worked in television before. I mean, it seemed very natural. Oh, well, that's very kind, but it was terrifying. <laughs> so I went in early, I spoke to um, lighting, to sound, to cameramen, and learned how to work with cameras. Because the thing is, it, it, it was a hard show because um, as a sketch show, not only are you playing all these different characters, but you've got a live audience on a Friday night, and it's multi-camera. It's not just single camera. So you had to know where to be for four cameras to pick you up at any time. So um, that was it. And then after I did the first series, um, I remember kind of thinking, oh, that was fun. You know, I wonder what will happen. I'd gone off to Canada, which is where I met my husband. I came back and all of a sudden, the first time I got recognized was on Oxford Street where someone went, hey, Nina, like this. And I looked at them and was like, oh, I don't know who that is. And I was like, hello, yeah. And he went, love your show, man, love it. And walked off and I thought, Oh my God, someone knows who I am. This is so exciting. And for the first two years, honestly, I, it was so much fun. Um, and now it's just really annoying. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was great. Ladies and gentlemen, and all those people in economy class, <laughs> welcome to this India Airways flight 235 from Bombay to London. We're now preparing for takeoff, so we've got to go through the goddammit bullshit safety procedure. Now, in the unlikely event of any fault occurring, please remember that we only took this job because of the glamour factor. So just keep out of our faces, pops. When, um, obviously, like you said, you were kind of acting, uh, not acting, sorry, you were um, learning on the role. Yeah. Um, and when you're performing in front of a live audience, which some people might forget, you know, seeing it on TV, they don't know yeah. um, that you're performing in front of all these people. Yeah. Um, how does it feel when you're doing the jokes and doing the sketches and you get all these amazing laughs but you have to stay in role so you can't yeah. show any emotion towards it. Oh, I'm I'm actually very bad at that, <laughs> as I'm sure they'll tell you. I I corpse a lot, especially working with Kovinda is and Sanjeev. I mean, it is impossible because the two of them, like, they clown around so much. Um, so, you know, we did, my favorite sketch is that um, Asian Top Gear sketch. When we did that sketch, that moment where Kovinda stops me walking forward because he's the man and I'm the woman, and then Sanjeev does it to me as well. 
I was gone. I think we had to do about 12 retakes of that because every time they did it, I just found it funny. So um, I'm not very good with that, but um, but on a on a stage, um, I can somehow kind of hold it together and manage it. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a it's a hard one. But I just I, I love what I do, and I love being in that comedy world. Um, it's it's very very exciting. Send it in, Vanessa. You. Frequent flyer. <laughs> what are you chaps doing here? Oh, we've just seen our youngest off to finishing school in Switzerland. Ah, quite right. Uh, what is he finishing? <laughs> she is finishing potty training. She's almost three. The English don't like to keep our children clinging to our apron strings, you know. Quite right. That's why we sent our youngest boy off to Rodine when he was only two. Rodine. Isn't that a girl's school? Well, he got in. <laughs> so what are you fellows up to? I'm waiting for my mamaji and papaji oh, to have <laughs> <laughs> He means his mater and peter. Um, did you know at the time when you're doing the show when realised the impact that it would have? No, not at all. When it first came out, I was perfectly happy for, um, you know, other Asian people to enjoy it. That's what I thought was happening. But after the reaction of the first series, I realized very quickly, hang on, this is a winner. This is uh, something that's transcended what we're trying to say. It, it's gone to the next level. The whole of the UK was behind us. And I had people from all different walks of life, all different races, cultures, languages even, um, saying how much they love the show. And that was when I thought, oh wow, okay, now there's a responsibility here. <laughs> Which one of the characters on the show was your most favourite to play? Oh gosh, to play, I would say uh, Mrs. I Can Make It At Home For Nothing, the aubergine lady, because that was based on my mum. <laughs> my mum desperately wanted my father to eat aubergines <laughs> because she was a very good cook and he ate all other vegetables, but he hated aubergines. <laughs> so she was obsessed with trying to hide it in some kind of food. And he'd always go, what is that? I don't want to eat it. So I combined this sort of slightly crazy character with an aubergine and so it was partly mum. Dimpu, get some tea. Oh, no, 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 no need. I made this at home for nothing. <laughs> now, about the wedding. Yes, do you have any thoughts on the venue? Yes, I thought we'll make it at home for nothing. <laughs> mum. Jump. What do you know about it, huh? You sit there with your Calvin De Klein chaddies <laughs> and your hair gel. Hmm? You think weddings are all free booze and fancy gifts and come on, Eileen. Hmm? When you look back on the show now, all these years later, does it still, I guess, humble you in terms of how much it still impacts people today? Hugely. I mean, I, I'm, I'm constantly humbled by it. I'm constantly feeling so blessed and lucky that it happened to me because, I mean, I didn't go into the show knowing this was going to happen. I went into the show because I thought these are like-minded people and I love any job that I do, even drama, where I get on with the actors because we laugh. Even EastEnders, I mean, I lasted for years, even though it was a heavy storyline towards the end, was because I loved everyone I worked with. So for me, that's more important than anything else. If you get along with the people, then the show rises to another level because I'm a team player. I just have that background.
was just going to mention that obviously it's not just goodness gracious me that you've done you've worked like you said across theater radio all these different shows yeah. but is there any specific performance or medium that you prefer to the to another theater is my first love always will be always has been and um i would say probably radio next um tv film just swallowed me up so um, but yeah, I'd love to direct now. I think I'm, I'm at that point in my life now where actually I would really like to direct something. Now, as a last question, um, for anyone who hasn't seen Goodness Gracious Me, which I don't think there's many people, <laughs> but if, there is, if there's one person that hasn't seen it, what would you say to them to convince them to watch the show? Wow, I would say um, just watch the first 10 minutes and if it makes you laugh, just keep watching it. Desiblitz.com